despite all the advantages and all the benefits that CRISPR may have, of course, there are some limitations, uh, some technical challenges maybe that need to be addressed. There are also some ethical issues, but this is something that I will not touch today. Uh, so the technical issues are mainly relating to the possibility of having of target recognition of genes into the genome. So you might have of target uh, disruption of genes that you are not planning to disrupt. Uh, you might have um, there are some issues also with immunogenicity uh, of them, some issues also with the delivery, with the efficient delivery of the CAS uh, component and also some, uh, um, let's say, limitation with the low homology directed repair that you might have. Actually, for everything, for all these issues, there are some um, solution, potential solutions. So actually, research is really going fast on that. Uh, so for example, for of target now, we can rely on very uh, good uh, prediction tools. So online predi of, um, bioinformatic prediction tools that may help in identifying potential of targets. Of course, they are mainly focusing on homologous genes. So not um, it's not really high throughput, but but also in these, we can uh, take advantage of our throughput next generation sequence technologies to somehow overcome this limitation. Uh, the other possibility is also that you can, um, uh, there, are, there have been some, some new research involving some uh, more advanced cast nucleases that have an enhanced safety profile, so they should have reduced of target ability, or uh, the possibility also to use some cas 90 cases that are uh, catalytically inactivated. So some domains of the nucleases are catalytically inactivated, and in this way, you may reduce the of target. I would say that the other issue uh, that is quite controversial right now uh, is the immunogenicity because it has been shown that uh, we have some pre-existing antibodies against Cas9, so this may pose a safety concern for the application of uh, CRISPR-Cas in, in gene therapy trial or in uh, immune therapy trials. However, I also need to point out that uh, in a paper that was published some years ago by June Group, in which for the first time it showed that in T cells you can perform multiplexing and disruption of different genes. So he studied then these T cells in patients, he could not observe any immunogenicity. So uh, on this topic, actually, there are two controversial <laughs> response because on one side it seems that we have some immune responses already pre-existing antibodies, but so far at least in this study, there was no immunogenicity observed. So pointing out at the safety profile. Uh, then, of course, you can also enhance some uh, the, the problematic of homolog homolog direct homology directed repair that so far is quite inefficient. Also there, uh, you may use some improved CAS uh, nucleases. Or more recently, there is also the possibility to use base editing. That is the next step of the CRISPR-Cas technology. I would say there are, depending on the what you need to do, you may also use base editing. Um, and then uh, what else? What did I mention also is also the possibility, um, the choice of the correct delivery of the CAS system component because you can deliver the CAS components by physical methods like electroporation, by viral vectors, but then you may have the problem of the integration of the lentiviral vector into the genome, so potential genoto genotoxicity problems, but you can also um, use uh, then associated virus that have, uh, they are not integrating, so you would solve the problem. You may use also lipid nanoparticles that have low cost, high compatibility, so they might offer good uh, alternative to the uh, delivery of the CAS components.